Welcome back to part five in our series on the TD Ameritrade WebSocket API. So in our last video, we built our client that will allow us to plug into our WebSocket, receive and send messages, connect to our database, insert data into our database, and all sorts of other fun stuff. So now that we've basically built our client, uh, we can now start making requests. So now we get to the fun part. We did all that work for literally, you're gonna find it's like four lines of code. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and also I have my little friend with me today. My little dog is all nice and happy and doesn't wanna be left alone. Okay, first thing we're gonna need to do is, so I was having some issues when I was trying to run this in a Jupyter Notebook. Apparently you need this library called Nest Asyncio or whatever, async Asyncio? I don't know how you pronounce it, anywho. You need this, and again, it's not installed by default. And so, uh, again, I'll leave some notes in the video description. Basically, you just gotta do a pip install like that. And then once you've done that, uh, you need to do nest, I don't know, and then just do apply. For whatever reason, then it allows you to do things where you can actually see the results in the Jupyter Notebook. I'm not really sure why it didn't work, but regardless. Okay, so let's do um, a request and start looping through and, and things along that uh, nature. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do create like a main part of our program where we're gonna create a client, we're gonna create a loop, we're gonna basically create a connection, define some task, and then run those tasks. So what we're gonna do is like, we're gonna say, hey, if double underscore name, equals main. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create that client object. So create the client object. That will equal client equals web socket client. And then we're going to define a loop. So this is gonna be a loop where we're gonna say, hey, send some requests, send some requests, all sorts of things like that. So this is the mechanism where we're basically defining something where we can send and receive messages. So we're gonna create a new variable, we're gonna call it loop, that will equal a, a single, okay, and then get event loop. So right now we don't have any, this will get one for us. Start the connection to that client or to the, um, the WebSocket, and then we can start sending in requests. So <clears throat> define an event loop, and then from here, start a connection to the web socket. Socket. And then we'll create a new variable, call it connection loop, run until complete, and then client.connect. And then this will just keep running because we haven't stopped anything. Okay, and then start uh, basically define the task that we want to run. So we're gonna create a list. So it does take a list. And then what we're gonna do is async ensure future client uh, receive, because we wanna make sure that we actually got a connection because you'd be surprised. Receive message for the connection. So make sure that we're connected first. And I'm gonna copy this a couple times because there's about four or five requests that we have to make. Two, yeah. three, and four. And then I'm OCD. So I'm gonna make sure everything's indented. So we receive that. And then we're gonna do our login. So we'll call login encoded. Uh, I wanna make sure I receive that. And then, uh, where is it? Oh, sorry, send message. Send message. We're gonna receive a message from our connection. So hopefully we logged in, everything went fine. We're gonna send another message. And then this one will be the data request. So the data encoded request. So 
receive a message from the connection, send a message to log in, receive that connection that, hey, you got logged in successfully, send a message for the data request, and then send a, basically receive the message back that, hey, you logged in, or sorry, you, your data was there. And then what we'll do is we'll say, hey, loop, uh, run until, what is it? Complete, ooh, I just realized I had a typo up here. Run until complete, and then it's gonna be a wait task. So these are all the task. And then that's really it. So run your task. Hopefully everything goes right. That's all we can hope for. Um, I'm just gonna double check spelling because I know how I am about that. WebSocket client, 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 okay. Client, client, receive message. Receive, I receive message. Okay, send message. Okay, so let's see. It's always something. Cool. So now you're receiving your stream. And the cool thing is, it gets all your data, but this is the fun stuff. So if I go back here, I don't even know how many requests I have. Jeez, I already have a thousand? Good Lord. I did not think I received that many. So it just keeps adding. So you see right down here, it's kind of hard to see, I'm sure, if you're on it. 1356. So if I run it again, 1361. So as it's requesting, it's putting it in there. And you can match that up with the timestamps too. So if, if you go here, you can see, that, you know, so 8974. I'm going to try my best to find it. I'm sure I'm not going to find it, but um, maybe I'm, I'm lucky, right? <laughs> maybe, just maybe. Eight, nine, hey, look at that. It was the last one too. That never happens. So it, it did successfully insert it. And it's now going. Now I can leave this technically running all day and, and things should be nice and dandy. But, you know, really from here, if, you know, if you wanted to stop it at this point, just, just stop it. I'm going to look into more of how we can make this more application-based. So, again, that's for later videos. But at this point, you've got everything you need to start using that web API and connecting to it and, and getting data requests. So at this point, I am going to cut off the video if you have any questions about anything we covered in this series, please put them down in the comments below and I'll try to help you through it if I can. Um, hopefully, like I said, should be everything. I'll be sharing my code. So ideally, nobody should really have to kind of write any of this from scratch. Yeah, you might have to change some things about, you know, where you're putting it and things like that. But for the most part, everything is fine. And then I will kind of show you different things up here because I know some people, they're not going to want to put it in a database. So I'll put some examples where if you want to write it to a text file, um, we can do it like that as well, or like an Excel file, you know, things along that nature. Because again, I understand not everyone's going to want to put it into um, an SQL database. But for me, it kind of just made a lot more sense because then I can just play with it, anything over there. So uh, again, any questions? please put them down in the comments below. And if you could, please make sure to like the video. Um, hopefully you found this series useful. Uh, you know, that was kind of the goal behind this. I know a lot of people have been asking about futures and Forex. And so I'm excited that I'm now able to offer something to those people because I know that was kind of disappointing. It's like, man, you can get all the stocks, but you not know, the Forex or the, you know, the futures. So I'm really excited. I think that will hopefully make a lot of people's lives easier. And then also, if you're not already, Hopefully this series enticed you a little bit, maybe to subscribe to the channel. Um, definitely more content related to this coming down the road. Um, if you haven't noticed already, there's definitely a finance emphasis in this channel. So I try to take a lot of common problems that you find in finance and just make Python scripts out of it just because it's fun stuff. And I enjoy doing that stuff. It's fun for me. So thanks again for watching, everybody. Uh, we will see you in the next video.